Hi, my name is Elaine and in today's video, I have an IKEA furniture haul for you. As you may know, 2018 or it was a big year for me and my boyfriend because we bought our first home. We got the keys in April and we moved in in July and we had been renting up until we bought the house. And what you might not know about Ireland is, is that you tend to rent a furnished apartment. So the furniture and everything is supplied for you. So when we moved into our house, we had no furniture. We had one uh, small unit which we used to store books and we used to put our mail and things like that on. But other than that, we had absolutely no furniture. So we had to buy everything from scratch. We were, of course, on a budget. It was our first home. We put all our savings into it. So we bought pretty much every item of furniture in this house from Ikea. As a couple of pieces that weren't from Ikea, but the majority of it were, and every single room has a piece from Ikea. Previously, I did an Ikea haul where I'd bought homewares and things like that, but I haven't seen a huge amount of Ikea hauls where people actually go through the furniture and show you how they are when they're put together and whether they're sturdy or not. So it's been, I guess, we bought most of our stuff between April and July, maybe a little bit afterwards. So we have a lot of the pieces for at least three months, um, some six months. So I think at this point, I'm able to tell you whether or not the pieces are good quality and worth your money. Uh, one thing though, is that I've decided I'm gonna give every item a rating. So instead of just giving it one rating, I'm giving it uh, ratings out of three categories and I'm doing um, a, a very Ikea type of uh, rating system, which is in meatballs. So the maximum that you can get is five meatballs and obviously the minimum is zero meatballs. So I'm rating them in terms of difficulty to put together time it took to put together and then sturdiness of the product from when we bought it to now as we use it over the past three months six months etc and um, if you're wondering what i keep looking down at i've got all my notes on the uh, ipad here so that's what i'll be looking down at and of course i will show you all of the furniture i'll bring you around the house and i will show you all the pieces if there's a particular piece that you want to look at and um, you can check all of the time codes down below, which I have them listed. And if there's any questions you have about a piece of furniture that I bought that I haven't answered in this, please let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. First off, we're going to start with the bedroom. And the big purchase that we had in our bedroom was our bed. So we bought our bed and our slatted base from Ikea and we got our mattress elsewhere. The bed that we went for was the Malm bed. Uh, which we got it in a white color and the base that we chose was the Lancet base. So first off, all of the important information is that we went for a standard king. So the bed itself cost uh, 235 euro and that includes the uh, slatted bed base, which if you wanted to buy separately would be 80 euro. So if you deduct 80 from that, I don't know, something like 215 euro, I think maybe. So that was the price of the bed. Uh, a couple of notes about this is that the bed itself, the where you put the bed base is actually adjustable. So you, we have quite a thick mattress. We have a foot high mattress. So we had ours on the lowest setting, but if you had a lot of thinner mattress, you could put it on a higher setting to either raise the bed up, or if you like a lower mattress, you keep it at the lower setting and the mattress would be level with the bed. If you look at ours, you'll see that our mattress comes out over the bed. And again, that's purely because we had a foot thick mattress and with a topper on top of it. But even with that, the bed itself is quite low. So the bed is never too high that you can't sit on the edge of it. I found it hard to get used to because we had been sleeping in a bed that was a lot lower. But now that I kind of have the bed a lot longer, I realize it's not actually as high. I was thinking that I was sort of going up into, um, you know, the top bunk in a bed, but it's not like that. It's actually perfect height for me to sit on. Another note is that, okay, so this one took ages to make. It didn't help the fact that we were actually making it the night that we'd moved into the house. So we were making it in order to get into the bed, but it took two people to make. Uh, first, my mom, my mom's boyfriend and my boyfriend did all of the base and they did all the slatted base part. And then me and my boyfriend uh, started doing the bed part. But then I started to get really tired during this. I went off and had a shower, so he finished it. But it definitely took, I'd say the base took two hours and then the frame itself took probably another two hours and that was with a drill. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are getting this and you plan on sleeping in it that night maybe start making it early. Another thing is that there is storage underneath it. So 
there is space for you to put drawers in underneath it. We didn't buy the drawers. Uh, we just didn't need extra space and I like sort of being able to see underneath the bed. Now we have our shoes and stuff stacked against it and maybe at some point we might upgrade and we might put in a drawer on either side just to add more storage but right now we don't need it so we didn't go for that option. Another thing as well is that it's super sturdy, it doesn't creak, it doesn't move, it's a real solid bed. Also in some of the reviews I was reading people were talking about how they'd hit their shins off the bed a couple of times. This hasn't happened to us yet, I don't think it might have happened to Ronan um, but that was one thing that I was reading in reviews and it's not an issue for us. In terms of the rating system for this bed and I'm including the slatted base in it because to be honest our mattress is so high um, that I don't really know if the base base makes a difference or not. It was, it was the mid-range price base so it has on the slats, if you look I'll stick an image up here but on the slats it has some are a grey colour which are softer um, and some are thicker so it's meant to sort of mold to you know where your shoulders would be and where your bum would be in the bed again because our mattress is so thick I don't know if that works or not but it's a great base so together my rating system is as follows so for difficulty of putting together I'm going to give it a five out of five because it was one of the most challenging things we put together for, for time it takes I'm going to give it a five out of five like it was four hours maybe even five hours in total that is a large commitment in order to put a bed together and then for sturdiness, I'm going to give it a four out of five. And the only reason that I deducted a mark was because when we were building the base, one piece of the, the bed hit off another piece and there's a chip in it. Um, other than that, it's very sturdy, it's solid and it doesn't squeak or anything, but that was just one thing that was like, and it wasn't even like it, something fell from great height, it just knocked off it and it took a chip out of it. So that was frustrating. Next I'm going to move on to our bedside tables. We were quite limited when it came to space in our bedroom for our bedside lockers. So we wanted to get the Hemnes ones but they wouldn't fit and when we were in Ikea we found these ones which are the Nordly bedside table. We got them in a white colour and each of them cost us 70 euros so we've got two of those. The main reason that we got these one was because they were so narrow so if you are sort of short of space with say or short of width beside your bed I would really recommend these ones. I think they're the thinnest of all. They're also quite deep so you can get a lot of books and different things into it and you know like I have a lamp resting on mine, my charging dock for my watch and my phone and then I still have space to like have a glass of water, I've got jewellery on it. I've got books and things like that um, and again there's loads of space underneath so on my boyfriend's side he has a box where he kind of stores stuff because otherwise he would leave books stacked up underneath so it's a good sort of use of space if you are stuck for space. What's really cool as well is that there's this hidden plastic shelf insert so that's great for like your keys or for you know putting coins or money and it's nice that that comes out but it still sits into your drawer so it gives you extra space. There's also this cool bit which I don't use but um, there's a charging shelf in it so the idea is that you can have your chargers looped up through the back leg and you can place your your phone in to charge now i don't use this because i have a charging dock my boyfriend does use it and because he has the new iphone it has wireless charging so in one sense it's really good but in the other sense when his alarm goes off every morning it's like fumble city because he first of all doesn't he would have trouble in the morning anyway so his alarm goes off panics and uh, then tries to kind of scramble try and find where his phone is has to open the drawers to bang it off and sometimes doesn't actually hit off and just hit snooze so it repeats the cycle in 10 minutes um, but it is really handy and you can put like your cables down the back if you had um, a lamp or whatever you can put it down in through the back of the leg so it just keeps everything neat and it looks neat because there's no messy cables at the back. We wanted these to match our chest of drawers which I'll talk about in a minute so our chest of drawers was the Hemnes chest of drawers and we wanted these to match so we went and we bought um, a, a doorknob which is the brand was the Hedra knob in and it was an anthracite color and each of them were two euro. Now these are the closest that we could get to the Hemnes. I think the Hemnes themselves is a slightly different finish but it's the exact same shape. So we bought these and we marked a center point and Ronan drilled um, through the center point and we attached the knob onto the doors. For two reasons this is good. One is that the drawer is just a little bit sticky or something so I sometimes find it quite hard to open it and before we had this doorknob you had to kind of pull it from underneath but now at least I can lean over and I can pull it from the doorknob which makes it a lot easier and a lot sturdier. Uh, that sticky drawer thing I don't really know, mine is stickier than Ronan's but still it's kind of, I don't know, it seems to be a feature and it's usually when the drawer is full it gets stickier whereas when 
you, there's nothing in the drawer, it's fine. Yeah, so we got these, attached them on, so easy to attach. I kind of wish now in hindsight that we hadn't put them completely at the center point and we put them maybe a little bit up, but uh, they look really good and they match in with everything else that's in our uh, bedroom. In terms of ratings for this, I'm gonna give difficulty a two, a very easy to put together. It's just a little bit finicky when you're kind of putting the drawers in and you're attaching some of the bits. Um, in terms of time, I'm going to give it a two as well. That's a two meatballs out of five because again, it didn't really take us that long. It was just like we, we had put a lot of furniture together and this was kind of the end of it. Um, I can't remember how long it might have taken us, maybe an hour to put the two together. And then finally for sturdiness, I'm gonna give it 3.5. And the main reason for that is because that sticky drawer drives me insane and I haven't seemed to find a way to fix it. But other than that, it's actually quite sturdy when it's put together, but just that sticky drawer is kind of irritating. Then finally in our main bedroom, we got the uh, Hemnes Chester drawers. So we went for the four drawer option. I think this is relatively new because when we went in to buy it, I had seen it online and we went in to buy it, um, the girl, we were asking one of the girls, which showed her a picture of it. And she was like, oh, I've never seen that before. And they didn't have any out around in the Ikea store. So we sort of just went by the measurements, but it's really nice kind of neat size because the one up from it is that little bit bigger and some are a little bit taller, but this one was a really neat, nice size. Um, and this one was 120 euro. And we just went for the white finish, not the white stained, just the plain white finish. When we bought this, we noticed that one of the corners of it was damaged as if we say the top, um, the top part of it had been dropped Thankfully, it was at the very back corner, so you wouldn't notice it, but it was one thing that was a little bit frustrating when we bought it. Now, Ikea are apparently really good at returns, so had we brought it back to them, I'm sure that they would have given us a refund and given us a new one. But by the time we noticed this, we were three quarters of the way through and we just didn't care. And even now I don't care because I put stuff up on it and on maybe if I was going to resell it or something, it would be a problem. Um, but I don't know how resellable Ikea furniture is. And to be honest, I would rather paint it or do something different with it than get rid of it because so far it's serving us well. Um, but that's the first time that I've ever had a problem with an Ikea piece like that where there was a massive dent or anything in it. Um, there was also a little, there was also a little mark down at the side somewhere, um, which if I can uh, locate it, I'll show it to you. Again, I think it was just that this particular package had been damaged before we got to it or it had been dropped or been hit off something. This one then is really good just in terms of size for our room and I really love it. I don't know if you've ever seen any of the Hemnes Rage. There's a really cool pattern inside all of the drawers. Um, I really love that. Now it's covered in clothes so you don't ever get to see it, but it was nice when we were putting it together. Um, but we're really happy with this. We're just happy with the size of it and the height of it and it just how well it fits into our room. Because our bedroom, we didn't put a huge amount of storage into it because we have this spare bedroom, because we have no kids and this is just a filming room and a practical room, we didn't need to worry about putting a wardrobe into our bedroom. So it's just that chest of drawers and our two bedside lockers. Then in terms of the ratings, I would give it a difficulty of maybe four thinking like three and a half, four. The reason is, is that the drawers are just finicky to make and there's a lot of steps involved in it. But in general, it was just, it, it wasn't too bad. It was easy enough to follow the instructions. In terms of time, I'm gonna give it a four as well. It just took a little bit longer than I had hoped. Um, and after building loads of other furniture, I was sort of sick of building furniture at this point. So I'll give it a four. And then uh, for sturdiness, I'm gonna give it a four. And the reason being is just that the nicks and the marks that we had when it was dropped. So I suppose it's something to be mindful of that if you're building your Ikea furniture that you don't drop anything um, because it will get damaged like ours did. Um, but again, it wasn't our fault. It was, we bought it before and I'm sure Ikea would have replaced it. Uh, next, we are moving on to the spare bedroom, which is the room that I'm in right now. And we have, how many? We've got two pieces in here. So the first was the Flecka day bed. So we went for the Flecka day bed that had two drawers and then we got the mattresses to go with it. So we got it in the color white and we went for the Malfour uh, medium firm mattress. The Malfour, uh, I think is like a mid range, not the cheapest, it's not the most expensive. And then I think it comes in firm and medium firm. So we lay down on them all and went for the medium firm because it was closest to 
what our bed would be like. Um, it's a memory foam, kind of core memory foam, and um, it has a cover over, over the mattresses. Then when it's closed, they're stacked on top of each other, and then when you open out the bed, um, the mattresses are side by side. The price of this one, including the two mattresses, was 470 euro. So it is quite an investment, considering that our own bed was 235 euro, but I suppose then we paid 400 euro for a mattress, so 635, so pro okay, yeah, so it's fairly standard, but I think when you think of a day bed, you go, oh, it's a, you know, it's a spare bed, so it's gonna be cheaper, but it's not, because it's still as good and as sturdy as a regular bed would be. The first thing to note about this was it took so long to build. So in the summertime, I went to Michael Bublé to see Michael Bublé with my mom, and Ronan was tasked with building her day bed uh, so that she could stay there that night, and it took him the entire day. One thing to note is that he didn't have a drill, so he was doing it all by hand with like the Allen keys and stuff. Um, but yeah, it took him the entire day and he actually made a really, really naff dad joke about it afterwards. So why does Ikea call it a day bed? Because it takes all day to make it. Yeah. What's good about this though is that it has storage underneath. So I have my towels in one side and towels and sheets and stuff. And then we've got all our winter clothes in the opposite side. The drawers are really easy. They come in and out. When there is stuff in them, and um, you know, when they're really heavy, it's very hard or it's more challenging to pull the actual bed out to turn it into a double bed, but it's not impossible. It just, you definitely need a second person to be able to do that. Another cool thing is that the headboard, which is at the corner can be put on either side. And then again, uh, we went for the medium firm mattress and we upgraded slightly in the price because we wanted our guests to want to come back and stay in our house and not have feel like they got really bad backs when they stay with us. And then my ratings for this one. So difficulty, I'm going to give it the five. I'd give it six if I could because I think it was the most challenging, particularly for Ronan. In terms of time, I'm going to give it a five also because it took an entire day to do. And then for sturdiness, I'm gonna give it a five. We've had absolutely no issues with it. We've had people stay on it. People are very happy staying on it and it's easy to move in and out. The runners are fine. And um, like I said, just when there's extra uh, stuff in it, it can just be um, a little bit harder to pull out, but it, but it works perfectly. Um, so that one is uh, all fives. Then the second thing that we have in our spare bedroom and the final thing we have in our spare bedroom from Ikea is the Hemnes five drawers. So this one is a tall unit and I use it for all of my makeup and beauty stuff and it is just an absolute dream of a unit. We couldn't get it in the plain white so it is white stained but I actually think it looks really nice in our spare bedroom because our entire spare, be spare bedroom is white and everything in it is white. It's also a really good height. I have this really cool a mirror that my mom got me for Christmas sitting on top of it and she bought it in a shop from um, a shop in Waterford in the southeast of the country which is called Finders Keepers and it's actually the perfect height because when I have it like the mirror or the window is behind it so when the mirror is at the corner the light from the window comes in and it's a really good place to do your makeup. One thing about this is that you're meant to anchor it to the wall. We haven't actually done that yet but they also say uh, to make sure that you put the heaviest stuff at the bottom of it. So that's what I did in order to kind of keep it sturdy. But we are planning on anchoring it to the wall because uh, friends of ours have kids or are going to have kids and we just want to make sure that they're safe and that, you know, the kids don't try and climb up, climb up it and falls and, I don't know, injures one of them. One thing as well about the finish, the white, stays, um, the white stain seems to be kind of more sturdy than the lacquered white finish. So. Uh, maybe again if we were buying stuff we might have gone for that instead and then uh, I had one issue with it though there's meant to be two screws that go up into the the top part of it and just one of them wouldn't screw in no matter what I did I think that it was misaligned but it hasn't you know with Ikea things if you've ever built any of their Ikea furniture you know that you know there's like 47 different ways to screw in the one piece together so it hasn't done anything to, to kind of ruin the structural integrity of it or anything like that so in terms of my ratings i'm going to give it a difficulty of about three and a half i think um maybe four it was just it's the drawers again actually yeah i think i'll give it a four because it's similar to the other hemnes even though it's a narrower taller unit it's actually making each drawer is kind of a pain um, so I'll give that a four. In terms of time, I'm gonna give it a four as well. I did it in two um, installments, but that's because I start to get really sick. I got a really bad cold in the middle of doing one of the installments. Um, and then in terms of sturdiness, I'm gonna give it a, uh, I'm gonna give it a four. Um, and my reason for that is that 
it although when I actually no I'll give it a five because it's perfect it hasn't like there's no damage or anything to it and it's working perfectly so I'll give it a five next up then it's our bathroom and we have just one piece in our bathroom which is our bathroom cabinet it's this is unpronounceable to me Lilangan possibly so this was really cheap it was 30 euro and um, I think it was cheaper if you had an Ikea family card at the time uh, but I can't remember and we just got this in a white color in terms of the difficulty of putting it together I'm gonna give it like I don't know I'm gonna give it a 3.5 because the unit itself is easy to put together but we had our builder mounted to the wall and I do think that if we had to mount it to the wall it would have been more challenging uh, in terms of time it took I'm gonna give it a two it took some time but not much and then in terms of sturdiness I'm gonna give it a five it's perfect I have no faults with it and there's like these little rubber stoppers so it closes uh, quite gently um, but yeah perfect next I'm going on to the sitting room now we had planned to get an Ikea sofa but we didn't in the end where we bought our sofa was a place called Feather and Burl which is in Dublin it's in Ballymount and the brand of sofa is called Opti Sofa which I think is a Polish brand and they import the furniture in so that's not an Ikea piece the only thing that's an Ikea piece in our sitting room is the LAC um, what's it called the LAC TV bench so this is a really small unit it was the best thing that we could have to fit and we actually used to have this in our uh, previous apartment our landlord had it there so it's perfect absolutely no faults with it it's really simple it's just plain white there's a shelf so you can kind of stack stuff on it um there's nothing fancy about it in terms of difficulty putting together I'm going to give it a one just because I have to give it something uh, in terms of time I'm going to give it a one you just screw the legs on that's it and then in terms of sturdiness I'm going to give it a five because we had it in our previous apartment which had been there for three years and there was no issues with it and ours is perfect it holds our brand new tv um and yeah there's no issues it's sturdy solid perfect and I would highly recommend that one then finally I'm going to go on to our kitchen and our conservatory so we've got four pieces from Ikea in this room so I'm going to start with our kitchen table which is the Lurham Man, Lerman, Lerham. There's like an M and an N really close together. Lerham. If anyone uh, can pronounce it, please let me know phonetically in the comments. And the color of this one was there's a, so there's a wooden top and there's white legs. So the white legs were a white stain, which is similar to our Hemnes chest of drawers in our in our spare bedroom. And then the top was a light antique stain and it was an actual piece of wood it's not laminate it's a, a big hunk of wood so we found our table quite hard to decide on which one we wanted um, we really wanted an extendable table one that would sit four or sit two maybe and then extend out but we just didn't like how those tables looked and they didn't really go with the vibe that we wanted we would have loved if we could have got an extendable table that looked like this one so that had the wooden top and the white legs but they just don't do one um, of that type so we decided instead that we would get um, one that would comfortably seat four people that maybe you could squeeze five onto or even six onto this particular table was so easy to build it's really sturdy um like you know like because it's a table that's been used a lot like you would kick off it or you'd knock chairs and stuff off it and so far none of it is scuffed i think part of that is because the legs are that white stain rather than that white lacquered finish and the top of it's perfect you could wipe it down with like a conventional cleaner um and yeah it's just it just is really holding up well and we've had that since probably August maybe so that's a good couple of months it's January now so sort of four or five months maybe in terms of the ratings the difficulty of building this I'm just going to give it a one it was so easy the time I'm also going to give it a one because again it didn't take us too long it, we were building a couple of things that night and this was one of the easiest and then in terms of sturdiness I'm going to give it a five because I can't fault it it's solid it doesn't rock or shake or anything like that um, and it looks so nice and lovely in our kitchen and the table uh, was 90 euro I don't think I said that then to go along with this we decided to get two nice chairs and then we got some folding chairs so the two nice chairs that we got these ones are always downstairs because these are the ones that me and Roland sit at so we got the Nord Myra chair um, and the color of this is oak and white um, so these chairs they were 35 euro each and again these were so easy to put together one cool feature about them is that they're stackable and I just like how they look in our kitchen um, we originally wanted uh, chairs like these these sort of plasticky uh, Swedishy kind of chairs but 
when we sat in the ones that Ikea had, we just weren't as in love with them. And then Ronan saw these and with the curved back, they're really comfortable to sit in. Uh, the base is a nice shape. Um, one thing I'd say though is, you know, we got them to match our table. I think because the oak is sort of a fake laminate type oak, it just doesn't look the same as the table. And that was one thing that really bothered me when we got them first, but I think it's, I'm the only person that bothers, doesn't bother Ronan and everyone who comes into our house compliments the chairs and thinks they look really nice. We could have got extra chairs, but then they would be stacking and they would be still in our way. So instead we decided to get two of these chairs and then we've got loads of folding white chairs, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, these ones for the rating of how, of, of the difficulty rating, I'm just gonna give it a one, the time it takes, a one, and the sturdiness, I'm definitely gonna give it a five. These are really good, solid chairs and they're really comfortable. Then, as I said, we got folding chairs, so uh, we keep them upstairs when we're not using them and these were 15 euro. They were the Terja folding chair and they were in the color white. Um, one thing to note about these is when you do go to buy them, they're just all in a box and they're in plastic. And the first time we went to buy them, every chair we pulled out seemed to be a bit scuffed and damaged. So we just didn't buy them that time. And the next time we went back, and um, they were all perfect. I don't know whether it was just a bad batch or maybe that they were, you know, it wasn't a full box. So maybe people had kind of rejected those chairs and the good ones were all gone or something, but it is something to note. So just check your chair fully before you take it home. In terms of the difficulty for putting these together, I have to give it a zero rating because uh, it doesn't take long. You just open them up, they're done. The time, gonna give it a zero. Um, and in terms of sturdiness, I'm gonna give them about a 3.5 because they're a little bit rickety, tiny bit rickety. Um, and then if you put a cushion on them to make them even more comfortable or more sturdy, uh, the cushion is too high and the heights for your back and so it's just, it doesn't work. But they're a little bit rickety and then they do get scuffed and damaged quite easily. And then the final thing that we bought in Ikea was the a Poang armchair. So they've got loads and loads of these and you can get them in different colors and different patterns and you know, different uh, cushions and stuff like that. So I think they were doing a deal when we were there, possibly, I can't remember. But we got ours in the birch veneer color. So it's nice and pale. So it goes with the rest of um, some of the little bits that are around our house. And then we went for the Hillerid, Hilliard, Hillerid, beige. So ours are beige. A color cushion and basically you get the cushion separately and um, and you pick up the chair separately I think and they come separately and then you put them together and these chairs were each 125 euro which is a tiny bit pricey but then actually it's not because they're so so comfortable uh, you can get a footstool to go with them but the footstool was quite big and we just didn't want to use it to take up our uh, conservatory space or use too much space we actually got a footstool made for us which I'll just show you here and um, which can you know can be used in our sitting room or in our conservatory so we went for our own sort of jazzy footstool rather than going for this one but if you had more space you could totally get the footstool and it would be such a comfortable chair to lounge out on we used to use these a lot more in the summertime so at the moment our conservatory is quite cold so we just don't spend as much time there but we at the time when we bought these we kept referring to them as the mvp of the house that and our sofa uh, they're just very comfortable to be in and to sit in and I like them because I can sit cross-legged in them reading a book we used to use them a lot when you know when it was summertime because the sun would be setting at night in our garden and we used to sit out there for a couple of hours until it got really dark and cold and on the really our house is quite hot in the summertime so on the hot nights we'd have the door open and we're just chilling out and relaxing out there in the conservatory these ones again are super easy to build and they're so customizable from the fabric to the wood type so in terms of the difficulty of putting them together I'm just going to give them a two because they're a little bit finicky but they're not too difficult in terms of time I'm going to give them a two and then for sturdiness I'm going to give them a four the reason I'm giving them a four is that when we first bought them they were a little bit creaky and they sometimes still have a tiny little sort of wooden creak to them I think that's because it's like a bent you know molded piece of wood um, but that's you know that's just me being picky that's just me trying to not give everything a five um, but that's it, that, they are all the pieces of furniture that we bought from Ikea in our house. We have a couple of other little pieces, but they don't exist in Ikea, I don't think anymore because they're quite old or I just couldn't find them. Uh, but yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you to see what the furniture is like when it's in a real life setting in a house. Because obviously when in Ikea, you can sit on it and try it as much as you possibly want, but until it's actually in your home or until you're using it from day to day, you don't know how sturdy it is. And also they never tell you how difficult it is to put together. I think if there was a rating system, it might change how people 
purchase IKEA furniture. Uh, but that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. As I said, all of the links and time codes and everything are in the down bar below. Apologies that it's a little bit long, but it's chock full of detail and I want you to know everything about these pieces of furniture. If you have any of the furniture you disagree with my ratings, please let me know. Or if you have any questions, definitely pop them in the comments and I will get back to you. And that's it for today's video. As always, you can follow me on all of my social media accounts. And particularly, I'm just gonna angle you towards my Instagram because my Instagram is where I um, put any of my house updates and all of my regular updates and things like that. I sometimes use my stories. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really supports me and helps my channel and it's gonna help me grow in 2019. Uh, if you want to follow me and you wanna follow more, like stay up to date with what I'm doing, please click subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.